So the speech of Allah, the speech of Allah will come before Allah and intercede to Allah for those that recite it. And what's the Muslim understanding of the fact that the, Quran, the Hadith actually say the Quran? Not the action of recitation doesn't say that here. That's your understanding. So this is what I'm saying. You're debating a point that I don't actually hold to. So you're, are you saying that all of the Muslims in this park who have told me that there is nothing in creation I'm like unto Allah is wrong? You're saying that they're, you're saying they that don't they understand. don't understand their own deed. Correct. I hope you're all listening, guys. Correct. Apparently, you don't, understand, don't understand your own deed. So my question to you, Jake, is these the, the, these attributes of Allah, his hands, his shin, his face, his eyes. Muslims here believe that they're real things. Do you believe that they're real things as well? Okay, Bob, are you done? Are you, are you actually going to address my point? No, I'm not. No, you okay. Know why? So I'm, I'm trying to drop that. I've no idea. I think something to do with the attributes of Allah. I'll leave it up Because I was originally, somebody commented on my video, um, this gentleman here. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you said you wanted to talk about the attributes of God, and I said that I'd like to talk about God entering creation. Yeah. And I think that there's enough overlap of those two things. Are you still facing the camera? That's a bit difficult, though. Otherwise... That, uh, so if I stand here, is that all right? And then maybe. I don't know. I, yeah. yeah. These guys if I if I if I stand this way, and then you stand that way, and then hopefully. So. Um, I can't face all of them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, we've we've. You, I, I said that I'd like to talk about God entering creation, yeah. and that there's there's enough overlap between your topic and mine, for us to do kind of both in a way. Yeah, the thing is, I have about forty-five minutes. Forty-five yeah, minutes. Go, so, so we'll have to. So let, let let's make it. Let, let let's focus in then on the word of God entering into creation. That gives you chance to talk about the kind of things that you want to talk about, and it gives me the chance to talk about. Yeah, well, the things I want to ask you about. questions because I want I want to understand your position because I watch your discussion with Hashem, and I want to understand your position better about what you understand the essence of God versus the energies and going into that. So that's yeah. related, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we can do both. Yeah. So so I, I would like to start off by asking you a question, if that's all right, Jake. So do you believe as a Muslim that God's speech, the, the word of God, is truly, literally, and really present in creation? In what sense? Can you explain? In the sense that it is it is here in the world. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. And as uh, if it is here in the world, I guess we're talking about the Quran. I'm not. I don't want to. I'm pretty sure that's what you believe, but I just want to make sure that that is what you believe. That the that we're talking about it being the Quran, the recitation. Yeah, Quran. Okay. It's the word of God. Yeah. Right. So, so is that is that speech of Allah? that exists in the minds of all of the Muslims that know the Quran and in the pages and pages of the various different Qurans. Is that speech of Allah now separate from Allah? Yeah, in the sense that it's in my mind, yeah. So, so, so the speech of Allah has separated itself from Allah and is now in your mind? In the sense that it exists in my mind, yeah. So, so the attrib an attribute of Allah has been divided from Allah? No. Because so, the, the my my representation of it in my mind is a created representation. Uh, right. So now, do you not see is 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 Allah comparable to anything that He created? What do you mean? In what sense? So, if any, if, if Allah creates anything, is it comparable to one of Allah's attributes? Yeah, but what do you mean by comparable? That's what As I'm in that there is a like-for-like -like symmetry. 
Uh, they're not identical, no. Okay, right. So the speech of Allah that is in your mind is not identical to the speech of Allah. It's a representation. So it's a representation. So Allah has created something that that it represents his speech. Yeah. Right. So what you have in your mind then cannot accurately be described as the word of Allah, but the creation of Allah. No, it's it's a it's it's created in the sense that it exists in my mind, and when I re recite the Quran, etc., it's it's my action, so it's created. I'm not, I agree, but the 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 action of the recitation is the word of Allah, is it not? The Quran is the word of Allah. Yeah, but it's the same so, thing. Like, so Allah has created something that is like His speech. What do you mean? Well, don't you Muslims say that Allah and all of His attributes are? Um, are, are inimitable, that, that there is nothing in creation like Allah or of his attributes. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It depends what you mean by like. So that there is a, I, I've already explained what I mean, the mirror representation. So but you're saying identical. Well, is when you recite the Quran, yeah. is that identical to the speech of Allah? Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. The difference is my speech is created. Yes, I know that. Yeah. What I'm saying is that when you speak the Arabic of the Quran, when you yeah. speak the Arabic of the recitation, yes. which you have said is created, are you actually speaking Allah's words? Yes. Right. So Allah has created something like one of his attributes, has he not? Doesn't yeah, that logically follow? It's a created follow? mode. Great. No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm happy to accept that it's a created mode. Yes. But, but it... it demonstrates one of the reasons why I believe Islamic theology and Islamic discourse about God is full of irrational contradictions. Because yeah, on that's one, what I want to get to. Well, because on, well, we're getting to it. Because on one hand, Muslims in this park have told me again and again and again, again and again and again, that Allah is not comparable to anything in his creation. But you have just said that when you speak the words of Allah, that which is created, your speech, is literally the word of Allah. So a created thing is like the uncreated. Then do you not see the contradiction there? No, because you're talking about other Muslims. You're dealing with me. I can't speak for them. I don't know what they so, told you. So, so, so you tell me how, how you would reconcile that contradiction. Oh. Um, he, he was kicking it at me, not you. So uh, just, just, just so you know, I've just had a ball kicked at me and it's hit someone else. Yeah, just focus. <laughs> so, that's why I said it depends what you mean by comparable or a likeness. I've answered that question. Yeah, but let me explain why. Because if I say that God exists yep. and I exist, yes. there is a le level of similarity between those two in order for it to have any meaning. Oh, I agree. I agree, which is, so, which is why when the companions of the Prophet say that when we describe Allah, that nothing we can think or imagine is like unto Allah, why we know that that means that at the heart of Islamic theology there is total irrationality. No, I don't think so. Because you're contradicting your, the companions of the Prophet. No, I'm not. Well, the I'm companions not. of the Prophet have said that... No, but that's your understanding of them. Yeah. That's your understanding. So this is what I'm saying. You're debating a point that I don't actually hold to. So you're, are you saying that all of the Muslims in this park who have told me that there is nothing in creation I'm like unto Allah is wrong? It. You're saying that, you're they, saying that they don't understand their own deen? Correct. I hope you're all listening, guys. Correct. Apparently, you don't, don't understand, understand your own deen. They don't understand what they said commitly he shaved me. So, so, when, so like, I, I've made it very clear what I mean What's by... What's your position on that? So, my position yeah, is... on the comparison. Yeah, my, my, my position is that God can and does enter into creation freely. Yeah, I know that because you believe in the Incarnation. Yeah, I'm of saying course. The attributes of God, the attributes that God possesses, when you say, for example, God exists or that God is, has all knowledge and that you exist and that you have some knowledge, is there any likeness between the concepts whatsoever? Yes, there, there, there has to be a likeness, and, and the, but the, one of the reasons why that works in Christianity but does not work in Islam is because within Christianity we are happy to state, like as it does in Genesis, that man is made in the image of God. We are happy to say, uh, as we do with Christ, that Christ is the 
image of the invisible God. And so we've got these touchstones, these bridges between the transcendent and the transient, that we can speak in meaningful language about God existing because we exist, and so we have a likeness of his existence. But what I'm... Yeah, but you're what saying I, that's Christianity. Yeah, but, but, but in but Islam you don't have that. you saying that all Christians agree with that? Yeah, what, every Christian I've ever met does. In, in, terms of, in terms of the Muslims I've met in this park, like Hashim, like, like some of the people who are watching here, they've been very vocal and very clear that nothing in creation is like unto Allah. Okay, so what I'm saying is Thomas Aquinas' position, when he talks about analogical predication yep. when it comes to God, yep. how do you understand that? Right, that's changing the topic. No, no, because it's directly relevant to this. No, 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 you're trying to jump around no, no. The, the, the interrogation. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying, Jake, this is that, it's not an interrogation. Uh, the the, so in, my, the interrogation point, of the no, doctrine of God you, entering creation. Yeah, my point to you is this. We're talking about likeness and similarity and comparison. That's what we're talking about. No, we're talking about God entering his creation. Yeah, but you, you do, started... You do you started, accept that God can went, enter his creation? You went, from, you went from the word of God, speech of God, you started talking about the Qur'an, and then you said, oh, the problem with that is because there's a likening. So that's what we moved to. No, 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 that's hold on. You, you, you've not to. followed my argument. So let me restate my argument to you step by step. I started off by asking you about whether your recitation of the Quran is literally the words of yeah, Allah. We and you said, no, it's the creation of Allah. Allah creates my recitation. So then I asked, well, is the creation of the recitation a like for like similitude to the speech of Allah? Which every Muslim has to say yes. Because when you're reciting the Quran, you believe that that is the word of Allah. Yeah. But if, so your, if your recitation is created, then that means that there is something that Allah has created that has a mirror, face-to-face, -face, similitude to the transcendent reality. And then you try to come back upon this idea, well, how do you reconcile the transcendent no, 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 from no, the I'm transient? Your point, your point that you're getting to is, is that there is a likening. That's your point. My, my, my point, no, the, 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 the point that I'm making to you is that you can't uphold two contradictory positions. You can't say on one hand that nothing in the whole of creation is like unto Allah. I know, but I've already clarified. And that. then on the other, but you haven't. And yes, then I on, have. well, clarify it again. And then on the I other hand. I don't believe your understanding of it. I so so it. explain your understanding of it. I did. I said. No, or maybe I did I said that on, when you compare God to creation, yeah. and you use terminology like existence, knowledge, power, etc., yeah. there is a relevant similarity between the concepts. Right. So I'm not denying that. No, no, hold on, because you're trying to you're trying to expand the discussion into categories, and I'm using using a very specific example, which is the speech of Allah. Yes. Right, well, the speech of... I'm saying it applies to everything. Right, but the speech of Allah is a very precise thing. Like, the Quran is a very precise thing. So, an, an, an exact similitude that he creates in your recitation, yeah. that is exactly like his speech, means that there is something in creation that matches perfectly Allah's speech. Yeah, but it's created. That's the point. That is the problem, though, isn't it? No, it's it? not a problem. You're so, saying it's a problem. So, right. What's so the problem? When the, right, well, the, the problem is this, right? And, and maybe, someone, maybe someone could just help out with the hadith itself. There's a hadith of the companions of the Prophet where the companions state that nothing that you can think or imagine is like unto Allah. I, I, I don't want to misrepresent you guys, I, I, and I think many of you, by some of the nods of your heads, recognize that you've heard that hadith before. But So if your companions are saying that nothing, nothing is like unto creation, like unto Allah, but then he's Jake saying that your recitation is created, then something in creation is like Allah. There is a face-to-face -face exact similitude. That is a rational contradiction. I don't see the contradiction. Which is why you need incarnation theology. I don't think so. Why do I need an incarnation? Because how do you explain this exact similitude between, between the, your recitation no, that Allah what's creates? what's the contradiction? The contradiction is that on one hand you're saying nothing is like unto Allah yeah, and his attributes. I've already explained it. That's based on your understanding of what Laysa Kamitli Hishe means. Right. Which I reject. So, so there is no contradiction. So I hope you're all hearing, guys. No Jake rejects what you've been telling no, me for I five years. No, I reject 
your representation of it. So I don't know what they said for so, the past five years. So, so, so let's dig into what you're saying. You're saying that in I've terms of... I've explained it three times. No, we'd, let's dig into it. What do you want to dig into more? I've already I, explained it. I want to it. dig into what you've said and interrogate what you've said. Yeah, but I've explained it three times. So that's fine. Let's dig into what you've said. Yeah, what more do you want to know? So what, what I want to know then is... Because at some point I have to get to my questioning. I, I said if you wanted to talk, remember you contacted me and I said if remember, you wanted to talk. Remember what initially happened is your friend, I don't know where he is. JC is right there. Okay. He initially commented and acted as if I came to the UK to discuss with Bob and whoever else. Yeah. That's Which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I agree. Totally okay. ridiculous. ridiculous. A statement well, then, I've never made. So, so because that was public, I said now I have to respond and show that that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. But, but let's so not don't flail around. As if let, I let, was Jake, burning to let, 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 let's not flail around in six inches of water. No, because let's stick but to you're, the, the you're deeper trying topics. to make it seem like I approached you. You did. No, but you I'm messaged saying, me. You literally how does it go back Did I message you or did you message me? Back to the beginning. I can release I the messages anything. and people can see. Yeah, I don't care. So, so I know what the mes messages So, did you message me or my message you? I messaged you. There you go. No, actually, technically, you messaged me. I put a tweet out and then you DM'd me after I told you that I was going to DM. You. That's what happened. Then we went back right. and forth. The point, the fact of the matter is, we can leave all that yeah, aside. Let's so stop flailing six exactly. inches of water. So, my point to you is. You can continue to ask me about this, but I'm saying at a certain point, I want to be able to ask you questions. How long have we got out of your 45 minutes? Have we done about we've already, halfway? We've done about 20 minutes already. What? We've done about 15 minutes. All right, we'll, 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 we'll give you uh, 15 minutes. I don't feel that you've, you've really okay, dug well, into the fine. topic. So my question is to you, do you believe that anything that has a beginning in time is created? Anything that has a beginning in time is created, yes. You believe that? Yes. yes. No, 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 hold on. My apologies. No, I take what that back. No, I take that back. No, Why I take that take back. That back? I, I, I would take that back because things can have a beginning in time that are uncreated, like the energies of God, the actions of God. So why did you initially say yes? Because I was just thinking about created things. Okay, so you believe things can have a beginning in time yes. and not be created. That's correct. Can things that have that beginning and end also be created? The things that have that We're beginning... We're uncreated, sorry. Sorry, d l rephrase your question because that didn't make sense. Okay, so those things which have a beginning... Yeah. Right? Okay, let's talk about the energies. Okay. Explain your understanding of the energies of God. It, what, start it, it, it's what God does. It's what God does. Yeah. Okay, so can you give an example? Because so, probably a uh, lot of people don't know what that fair means. Fair enough. I'll, I'll give you an example. So one of the attributes of Allah is that he is the creator. Now, that presents a logical problem, obviously, because Muslims believe that Allah has always been the creator, even though Allah hasn't always created, which yeah, is another... That's what I want to talk yeah, about. So it's, that's an irrational contradiction. You're not a creator until you create. Christians, we, because of the energy and essence distinction, don't have that problem. Because what we say is that God becomes the creator when he creates. And this action of creation is, is, is an energy. It has a beginning in time. So did, the, did God's, from your perspective, the energy of creating, did that have a beginning? The energy of creating? Yes. Um, in other words, when you're talking about the energies, you said that you can have an energy that has a beginning that is not created, correct? Yeah, the source of it. Okay. The source is the essence. Okay, so can you have energies which don't have a beginning? So, so, I mean, Meaning eternal. Yeah, so, so, uh, let, let, let's be clear about my, my knowledge of the, the theology of Gregory Palamas. It's something that I'm studying, I don't claim to be an expert. So, I, I want to, I want to state from the beginning that if I say something in error, I'm open to being corrected by those that know better, like Bu Bronson, Bu Branson Johnson, yeah. the, the guy that you know. So I, I, I am open. Or maybe me. Uh, I'm, I'm open be to me. be corrected. I'm open to be corrected. Well, I would check everything that Dai say anyway. Yeah, um, I'll show it to you. Yeah, that's fine. But but my understanding is that things like God creating are dependent upon things like mind, will. Um, the desire of God that, that to do something. So it's predicated on something else. Yeah. Now, whether I would define things like God's mind as an energy, I don't know enough about Gregory Palamas's d 
discourse on these things to say whether they yeah, should I'm be turned on asking, energy. I'm asking a specific question. We, you, would, you agree that there are some energies, or maybe all, that's what I'm trying to figure out, that have a beginning but are uncreated, correct? They, 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 they have a beginning they, they but a, they're not they, they created. Are yeah, like the act of creation. Okay. So they have a beginning but are not created. They're uncreated energies. They're uncreated now I'm asking, energies. we got that aside. Yep. Now I'm asking if there are any energies which don't have a beginning that are eternal. I couldn't answer that. I don't, don't know. know. I don't know Gregory Palamas's position enough to answer that question. But I'm saying that's that's basic and fundamental to this discussion. And what's your point? My point is, and that's why I wanted to address it before, that you're using terminology here in the park that you don't actually understand. Well, no, I, I think if... Are you, are you saying that I'm wrong to say that the energies are God's actions? Depends what you mean by that. that because that, I can that, show you... That, this is why I'm trying to tell you... Yeah. You don't actually know what the energies of God are. Well, well, let's, let, let's come back to this. Let's yeah. come back to this. You say that Allah is a creator. Yes, I do. Was he a creator before he created? Yes. How can someone be a creator before exactly. they Exactly. What I'm showing you is, and you said you don't know about Gregory Palamas. No, I don't know everything exactly. about Gregory Palamas. So I'm Palamas. telling you, I can pull it up and read you a quote. Hold think, on, let me finish. I think, I think, let I me think, finish. I think let me, that, I'm answering hold your on question. Second, hold on one second. I'm answering your question that to goal, show I'll you that you, you should you, actually let, agree with me. Because Gregory Palamas talks about creating being an energy of God yep. that is eternal. But you didn't know that. And? That's my point. You're criticizing. The point is, you're critiquing the Muslim point of view and attempting to represent the essence energy distinction, but you haven't read Palamas. You and don't understand Palamas. These are all frivolous and points. You're, no, it isn't. Because you're critiquing a position which at the same time, your own position that you're representing is in agreement with. Jake, Jake, Jake. Unfortunately, Right, raising out these red herrings about. They're not. It's no, not a red on, herring. On, uh, Jake, it's not a red herring. Sorry, uh, do, 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 do you asked me to listen to you. Now I would ask you to do the same. Yeah, but you're saying so, it's a so, red so, herring. Oh wait, wait. Are we going to do? Are we going to do the whole interrupting thing for the last fifteen Go ahead. minutes? Go right. Ahead. So it's a completely frivolous point. My knowledge <laughs> of Gregory Palamas in terms of my critique of Islamic theology. Now, I stated quite honestly and quite openly that I'm learning. The theology of Gregory. You're learning Palamas. right now, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, and I'm not someone who would fall into the trap of believing that because Jake presents himself as some expert of Gregory Palamas, that suddenly that means that he is. I'll send it to you. Yeah, anyone can be an expert of a quote, bro, but that doesn't make them an expert of the person okay, that the we'll quote let the is people from. Judge. Exactly, but it's 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 a it's a misleading thing that because I've got X quote that that means that I'm an expert of that person. But this is a completely frivolous... You're interrupting again. You're interrupting again. You're interrupting again. You're interrupting again. Yeah, there you go. So he's just said that he's not an expert. I'm not an expert. So we've got two non-experts talking about Gregory exactly, Palamas. Exactly, but I know more than This you. is why it is a frivolous point, and it's no, ego-driven. Jake is, Jake is allowing his ego to get the better of him right now. Perfect. Because the real point, the real substance of the debate, the real substance of the debate is about whether the description that is given of God within the Christian worldview or within the Islamic worldview actually makes sense. And I would say to you that it makes no sense at all. No sense. And if Gregory Palamas makes this mistake, I will call out Gregory Palamas for the same mistake. But it makes no sense to say that someone is a creator before they've created. That's like, that's like me saying, that's like me saying that I'm a GP, a general practitioner of medicine. Why? Because I have the potential to become the general practitioner of medicine. Okay, so that logic is irrational, but yet that logic sits at the heart of what okay. Islam says about Allah. Okay, so Bob, on this point, just like you're saying, you can't be a creator unless you create, right? Yeah. Okay. Can God be providentially ordering the world or have providence without the world? Um, can God providentially... Can no, he have yeah, the providence world, the world, without the world existing? The world has to exist for him to be providentially ordering the world, which was your question. Okay, providence itself. How do you understand that? Can you have providence over something that doesn't exist? Well, providence, providence implies that something exists, doesn't okay, it? Okay, it does. Yeah. So God, you don't think, can have the attribute of providence from eternity past? Um, I mean, logically that seems to follow. Okay. 
Yeah. So let me let me so, read, let me read for the audience, okay? Because Gregory Palamas. How, how this is relevant. Bob had a discussion with my good friend Hashem, was discussing essence, energy, distinction, talking about creation, and God cannot be a creator without creation. But let's listen to Gregory Palamas, who actually crystallized the essence, energy, distinction. If Bob actually read the triads on the very first page of the discussion on essence, energies, what does Gregory say? I should like to ask this man, Bob, why he claims that only the divine essence is without beginning, whereas everything apart from it is of a created nature, and whether or not he thinks this essence is all-powerful. He's asking a question. That is to say, does it possess the faculties of knowing or foreknowledge or creating of embracing all things in itself? Does it possess providence, the power of deification, and in a world, all, word, all such faculties or not? He's asking a question about everything, and notice that creating was mentioned in that. For if it does not have them, this essence is not God, which is what the Muslims say, that if God did not actually have the attribute, or in Christian terminology, in this case, the energy of being a creator or creating, then he couldn't be God. This is what, hold on, let me finish the quote. This is what Gregory is saying. This essence is not of God, even though it alone is unoriginate. If it does not possess these powers, but acquired them subsequently, meaning after the fact, then there was a time when it was imperfect, in other words, was not God. However, if it possessed these faculties from eternity, it follows that not only is the divine essence unoriginate, but that each of its powers, which are the ones that we just mentioned, creating knowledge, etc., is also. Nonetheless, there is only one unoriginate essence, the essence of God. None of these powers that inhere in it is an essence, so that all necessarily and always are in the divine essence. So all of these, which yep. is exactly what the yep. Muslim position is, that these so-called energies or attributes of God subsist in his essence eternally, and he actually uses the phrase creating. Right, so, so now you're going against so, Gregory so, Palamas. So, so, so is this the, the point where you Jake, tell us that Jake, Gregory Palamas? So allow me to reply. Is this the point where you tell Jake, us? Jake, allow me to reply. Allow me to reply. Yeah, go ahead. So I've got no problems with what he's read. Gregory Pal Palamas makes a distinction between the essence and the energies. The the essence of God is unknowable. The energies of God are what God does in reality. I've got no problem with the idea that God has always had the ability to create. That he has always had the ability to have providence. No, got no problem with that. Because the things like God's mind, God's will, have always been there, are always part of who God is. What I have a problem with is Islamic theology, which says that God, one of his titles, is that God is completely self-sufficient and independent from creation for all that he is, including all of his attributes. And then one of those attributes is to say that God is merciful. Mercy, by definition, requires a transaction between the mercy giver and the one who receives mercy. So you can't have an irrational contradiction that says that God is merciful always, but yet the reality that mercy is a transaction. By contrast, Christians don't have this problem because the mercy of God, which is an energy of God, which therefore is uncreated, is something that comes out of the fact that God is love, that God has a mind, that God has a will. So the difference between our two theologies is that Christians create a distinction between the essences and the energy, whereas Muslims maintain that Allah is a monad, a tawheed, a one, not a plurality. So my question to you, Jake, is are you saying that within the oneness of God, there's a compound unity, there's a plurality within the oneness of God? Is that what you're saying? Okay, so let, let's go back to what I ju what just happened with Bob, okay? So you're not going to answer my no, question? No, I'm going to answer you. I'm gonna, I'd I'm like gonna, to hear I'm that. I'm going to explain to you what you just did. You diverted from the whole thing. 
The fact of the matter is, what I'm demonstrating here for the audience is that Bob is using catchphrases. He's using language of essence, energy, distinction, but in actual fact, he has no idea about the theology of Gregory Palamas. He's never read the triads because if he did, he would know what the energies of God is, but has no idea about them. So I was I wrong? Let me finish. Let was me I finish. wrong? I'll let you speak. I'll let you speak. You did. Okay. So when I asked about providence and creating, you said, yeah, that makes sense. God can't have providence from eternity past when he can't be providential over anything. I retract but, that statement. But Gregory Palamas actually said, what did he say? That no, God's providence is from eternity past. Meaning he didn't need creation in order to be provident over something, which is the exact same thing that you're accusing Muslims of being incoherent. So what is incoherent is you're representing a theology and attacking Muslims, but what you're actually attacking is what you yourself are claiming to represent. That's the incoherence. Why? Because you have no idea about Gregory Palamas. You've never read the triads. You don't understand his theology. Okay, so can I reply? Because yeah. I noticed that he didn't actually answer my question. Because you're not Re dealing with the crux of the Re matter. Remember the question was, does Jake believe that there's a plurality within the oneness of God? Because Gregory Palamas does believe that there is a plurality within the essence of God. Gregory Palamas does believe that the energies are plural. That's what Gregory Palamas believes. He says, I don't understand, and I'm not claiming to be an expert. But remember, he's not an expert either. And he's admitted that. I'm quoting right Furthermore, on. furthermore, don't interrupt. Furthermore, furthermore, I am not wrong in my understanding of the energies. The energies are the actions of God. They are what God has done in the world. Now, what I would suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, is before you just assume that Jake actually understands Gregory <laughs> Palamas, is that we actually, and I will, and we'll go away and we'll dig into some more of what I Gregory Palamas says. But the reality is, when we look at what Islam teaches, if they are going to use the essence energy distinction as a defense to their theology, then they must admit that God is not a monad. That within the oneness of God, there is a plurality. Because very centrally to the whole point of Gregory Palamas's argument is that the energies are plural. So I'll ask you again, because you avoided it. Are you saying that all of the Muslims here who for five years have told me that God is one, that he is a singularity, a monad, that they're all wrong and that there is a plurality within the oneness of God. Is that I'm what you're committing I'm, yourself I'm to? I'm saying that you have misunderstood the Islamic doctrine because everybody here knows, unless they're really <laughs> in complete denial of the fact, that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, but he has multiple attributes. Nobody denies that, except those who have a heretical understanding of Tawheed. So, to answer your question, yes, we believe that God is one, but he has multiple attributes. Now back to the so point. So there, well, there's a no, plurality no, no, no. within the oneness of God? There's, he has multiple real attributes. Are they? Are Just they... like you, Bob, you, you go around saying, oh, he has 99 attributes. So you're acting so, like you don't so, know this. So, he's, so, he, so within the no, oneness you're, you're, of God, no. there is a plurality? Listen, I just explained it to you. What about the every, body parts? Every Muslim, yeah, so you want to move on to another point. It, it's you wanna, relative you wanna, to the same you point. Move, you want to move on to another point. So I want to oh. get back to the, I want to get back to the point which you talked about earlier, providence. You, you're running no, away no, no, from no. the I point. I want to get back to what you said earlier about providence, that God could not be provident unless he had something to be providential over. What does Gregory say? For was it not needful for the work of providence to exist before creation, so as to cause each of the created things to come to be in time out of non-being? This is a question he's asking. Was it not necessary for a divine knowledge to know before choosing, even outside of time? But how does it follow that the divine foreknowledge had a beginning? How could one conceive of a beginning of God's self-contemplation? And was there ever a moment when God began to move toward contemplation of himself? Never, he says. So the fact of the matter is, as I said again, 
Gregory Palamas says that in terms of creating, in terms of God's providence, he's directly contradicting what you're claiming about the essence energy doctrine. Jake, you've got to listen to what I've said. So what I said on that issue of the providence, I'm happy to retract okay. my statement okay, and to so defer. Let's, no, no, let's, no, Jake, 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 let's, let's Jake, Jake no, hold on one second. Because you, as quickly as you could, got away from the fact of the plurality within the oneness of God. Nobody's questioning that. Everybody no, no, no. believes oh, hold in on. multiple hold attributes. This so is, no 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 the essence fact. of God. The essence Correct. of Allah. Yes. Are the attributes of Allah sing are they do they does the essence of Allah is it shared amongst the ninety nine attributes? What are you talking about? I don't even now, understand the question. Now, you see, th this is the point. If you're saying that Allah has 99 attributes, and let's move on to his body parts, because I think this brings I know it up. you want to move on. Yeah, we are going, we, we are going. On. Jake, why are you, you interrupting? Why are you interrupting, Jake? it's hard on you. Right. What's happening so, is hard oh, on no, you. No, no, no. It's hard if on you. We can both do the interruptions, but I, I promise you, when I start interrupting you, you'll complain. No, I won't. Right, great. So now I'll interrupt you then, freely. So well, in terms you're of... Talking, you're talking about Jake, me, then Jake, I'm going to interrupt. Jake, yeah. Jake, so... The reality is, Muslims talk about Allah as a monad, and they use that as an argument against the idea of the Trinity. They say that one can't be three and three can't be one, but what they're saying here is that Allah is a monad, he is a singular entity with body parts, hands, shin, face, eyes. Now. These things are real things according to Islamic theology. He's not even listening now. He's not even listening. So my question to you, Jake, is these, the, the, these attributes of Allah, his hands, his shin, his face, his eyes, Muslims here believe that they're real things. Do you believe that they're real things as well? Okay, Bob, are you done? Are you, are you actually going to address my point? No, I'm not. No, you okay. Know why? Because Fair you're enough. diverting from the actual issue. No, not at all. You've made a no, claim. the issue you've was. Claim. No, the you've issue was. The issue you've was. Remember claim. when Hold we on came? A second. No, no. You wait, wait, wait. Was you said you didn't want to do you it. Said you it said it was okay to interrupt Hold because remember you, you interrupted. My do you friend, remember when you did that? You said it was incoherent. Do you incoherent. remember when you did that? You said it was incoherent but now you don't for like God it, to be do a you? creator before mm. creation. It is incoherent. It, exactly. To but call Gregory him a creator. Is, okay. Call okay. him a creator. Let's see who knows Christian theology better, me or Bob? No. And who do you... No, who, no. Okay. I would like you to who, address who, the point, who, who Jake. Should we believe? Jake. Should we believe Bob Jake. in the park? Jake. Or should we believe Gregory Palamas? No, or Palamas? should we should we believe, should we believe Jake's Gregory? interpretation okay. of Gregory so Palamas? I'll let you That's the question. The Remember, I'll you've got you two non-experts talking about okay. Gregory Palamas. So let's, let's do this. So the best thing what that you can do, do ladies and gentlemen, experts. we're going to have the experts the game, watch this. They, they, we're going we'll to have the experts watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, this, the best thing that you can do, we'll the, the best thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do, He's go away and study Gregory okay. Palamas. Okay. That's the best thing you, you can do. Do you agree that Dr. Branson so, is an expert? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so how about this? Right. Dr. Branson, I'm going to send you this video afterwards, and you tell me who's representing the essence energy distinction properly. All the, all the, okay? essence, all the energies plural. Yeah, they are. Does Gregory Palamas base the idea? That. He base that. the idea. Right, so the energies are God's actions. Is that also correct? Not totally, not necessarily. Right. So in terms of in terms of the the energies that were that are uncreated, things like the mind, the will, I'm guessing that's what you're talking about. What do you mean? So we're talking about the, the mind of God, which is not an action, it's just there. The will of God is not an action, it's just there. Are we talking about that? As the are you are you defining those as energies? This is, this is what I'm saying. You I'm don't know what the you. energies I'm are. I'm asking you, Jake. What's your are position? Are you defining? What's no, no, your no. Position? Don't answer a question with a question. What's your position on it? Because you're Jake. representing essence Jake. energy theology, Jake. but Jake. you don't know it. Jake. You don't know it. I've never stated to be an expert of Gregory Palamas. Why are you representing something in the park that you don't because, understand? Because Muslims are making claims okay, that are this? irrational. How about the, and I'm, okay. the description of Allah is irrational. If you state that Allah can't enter into his creation, okay. then you've got to be able to explain how the Quran exists, okay, so let me, let me, which let is me, where we started. Address, and address, you wanted to get away from that as soon as point. Bob no, is Jake. the epitome. Bob, Hold on a second. Let no, me, no, let no, me Jake. No, he interrupted no, and no. you weren't asking him not to Let's, interrupt me. Okay. How, so how answer my question, I, Jake. How long should I let you talk? Yeah. Well, we could have timed it. If you want to do a time part, we can do. Okay, go ahead. Talk for a minute. Right. Shall we get a timer? Seriously. Go ahead. 
See, the thing is, you get upset if you're interrupted, but you were happy to interrupt me. Who said I'm upset? Well, by the, by the way you... <laughs> I'm not upset. Right now. Go on. I'm not upset. So, Jake, are we going to do a timer? So go on, finish your point. Go ahead, Bob. Right. So Muslims are making a claim that Allah can't enter into his creation. But then they're saying that the Quran is really the speech of Allah. Now, then they say, Muslims say, that, Allah, that, that something that is created is not like Allah or his attributes. But then they say that their recitation of the Quran is created. This is an irrational contradiction. You can't maintain two, for, two positions in conflict like that. Whatever my failings are in, in my knowledge of how Gregory defines the energy essence distinction, which is a red herring to the point of whether there are irrationalities to Islamic theology and whether God can enter into his creation, is, is the key point. If you're saying, ladies and gentlemen, that nothing that God creates is like God, but then you're saying that the recitation of the Quran is like the speech of God, you've contradicted yourself. And I'd like you to address that point. Bob, do all Christians agree with you on the essence energy distinction? So are you going to answer my point? A answer the question. Because you oh, keep, you're, you're saying not this, answering my you're question, but you're this, demanding you're saying, that I answer you're yours. Saying, you made a claim. You keep talking Jake, about. Jake, you're literally, you you're literally you demanding I answer your Christians question Muslims, when you're correct? not answering is, you're my question. Christians versus Muslims. Are you saying that all Muslims agree I'm about the body you, parts do of Allah? All Christians agree with you on the essence energy. Okay. No, of course not. Okay, so why but, are you asking? But, but, why are you, but do all Muslims you agree about the body this? parts of Allah you, being real? Okay, so, so do, wait, wait. Do the Ashuri do agree with the Salafi about me, the body parts me, of me, Allah? Give me one minute. Me, Jake, answer that question. Answer that question, because you ask questions, okay, but you don't me, answer let me, them. Let me talk. So Bob is here in the park trying to represent all Christians, but the fact of the matter is, he doesn't, he knows that I've not, not all that. Christians actually agree on the essence energy distinction. As a matter of fact, the Catholics don't. They don't agree on it. The majority don't actually agree on it. Also, the fact of the matter, him saying that it's incoherent to state that God could be a creator without creation. Well, let's listen to St. Athanasius himself. He said, and a man may be made or called maker, though the works are not yet. But father, he cannot be called, nor can he be unless a son exists. And if they curiously inquire why God, like Bob here, though always with the power to make, does not always make, though this also be the presumption of madmen, which is Bob, he's a madman right now. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who shall say to the form, to the potter, why did you make me thus? However, not to leave even a weak argument, they must be told that although God always had the power to make, yet the things originated had not the power of being eternal. Minute. So the fact of the Time. matter is, St. Athanasius says Time. that you can be a creator without Time. creation. Time. No, Athanasius did not say that. The quote actually said that God has the power to be the creator. And, that's and I don't means. deny that. But to be a creator, you actually have to create. Now this is further. Now notice that Jake avoided my issue completely about the Quran. And the reason why it is an issue is because the hadiths state in Sahih Muslim 804, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. So the speech of Allah, the speech of Allah will come before Allah and intercede to Allah for those that recite it. And what's the Muslim understanding of the fact that the, Quran, the Hadith actually say the Quran, not the action of recitation, doesn't say that here. It says the Quran will come as an intercessor. But an intercessor is personable. And the one you're interceding to is personable. So the attribute of Allah is talking to Allah himself. That's a contradiction to Islamic theology. Ready? Okay, so again, what I'm demonstrating here is Bob doesn't understand Christian theology. I have to teach him. So we're just having two separate conversations. Him, I have to teach him what St. Athanasius said. I have to teach him what St. Gregory Palamas says. 
Now, the incoherence is not in Christian, in Islamic theology. The incoherence is within Bob. And don't worry for the Christians watching, I'm not going to put it on Christian theology. Why? Because I can actually read Palamas myself and he understands the point. Just as St. Athanasius did when he said that God can be a maker or creator in the sense that he has the ability to create, which is exactly what Muslims say. The act of creating itself has a beginning in time. Those are two different things from the ability to create and the expression of the attribute, which is what Muslims have always said. And you just don't understand it, Bob. So maybe you've been talking to the wrong people time. or maybe you don't understand Islamic theology. Time. Okay, ready? The reality is that it is a complete contradiction to say on one hand that Allah is completely self-sufficient and independent of his creation. And in every respect, including in all of his attributes, and then to say that Allah is the most merciful. Because mercy by definition requires a transaction between the mercy giver and the one who receives mercy. Christians do not have this problem because of the energy essence distinction. Now we're having two separate conversations here. Jake is no longer engaging with the arguments that I'm making. And the reason for that is because he doesn't want to defend the contradiction of saying that the Quran is the speech of Allah, but then having to deal with a source that says the speech of Allah intercedes to Allah for the believer. Instead, he has to reinterpret the hadith and call it the deeds. No, what I'm actually doing is I'm showing that Bob is attempting to represent Christian theology. Hold on a second, man. You, you had your turn to talk, please. Bob, I put it on screen. So, I'll put it on screen. Put it on screen. Bob is attempting to represent Christian theology. He's acting as if all Christians actually agree with his theology, but they don't. Even St. Gregory Palamas, who is the one who crystallized essence energy distinction, doesn't agree. He tells you that creating and providence are eternal energies of God. But yet Bob doesn't know that because he thinks the energies of God are limited to God's action. He does not even, he couldn't even answer the question as to whether or not there are eternal energies. Imagine that. Bob came here representing essence energy distinction and doesn't know if there are energies that are eternal. I want everybody to witness this and we'll go to the experts to see whether or not Bob is so inadequate that he doesn't understand the own position that he's representing. Time. So what we've got here is two different conversations going on. There's now no interaction between the two of us. I am challenging the irrationality of Islamic theology. You cannot claim on one hand that Allah is totally independent of his creation and then ascribe to Allah the idea that, uh, of, of something that requires a transaction like mercy. Now, he's, Jake has obviously got something that he wants to drive home about me, that I am ignorant of Gregory Palamas. Great. I'm ignorant of Gregory Palamas. But what does that prove? What does that prove in terms of his understanding of Islamic theology or the defense of Islamic theology given the criticisms that I am making? Notice he's avoiding all of my questions. He's come here to attack me ad hominem, but he's running from the subject of the debate, which is himself. Sorry, not himself, the topic. Actually, I've responded to all of his points, if no, you, you actually notice, and I'm using his own scholarship to show him that his own scholars actually agree with the Muslim position, which is what we've been going over this entire time, which is what? that God can be a creator without creation. Why? In the sense that he has the ability to create, which is the attribute of creator, and then he expresses that attribute with his will. He has that ability. Now, Bob, unfortunately, he doesn't even know that Gregory Palamas considered will itself to be an energy of God. Why? Because, and how, why am I bringing this point home and I keep harping on the same point? 
because Bob is here in the park attempting to represent Christian theology and the essence energy distinction, but he doesn't even know whether or not you can have eternal energies, which is the very basics of Gregory Palamas's theology. Time. Okay, so he made a big deal about the difference between Thomistic, um, Thomistic divine simplicity and Gregory Palamas's energy essence distinction, and the fact that not all Christians agree. Well, not all Muslims agree about how God's body parts should be understood. Salafis believe that these are real things, which opens up another question. If the hand of Allah is a real thing, but you can't conceive of a hand in any way that you understand what's actually being communicated. Whereas the Ash -Ash Asherites believe that all of these things should be understood as simply metaphors. So simply pointing out that groups of religions, groups within religions disagree is a non-point because um, Jake here doesn't represent all Muslims either. So what point does he make? All he's got one point to make, which is that I don't know everything about Gregory Palamas. That's his only point. No, the, the, the point is this, that unlike Bob, I can admit that there are distinctions within Islamic theology. On his hand, he's coming here representing Christian theology, and in his debate with Hashem, which I recommend people watch, he's saying, we Christians believe in the essence energy distinction, and keep saying, we Christians believe in this, when in actual fact, the Catholics do not actually believe in the essence energy distinction in the way that Bob is representing it. So the problem is not that there are differences of opinion within Christian theology, the problem is Bob misrepresenting Christian theology and making it appear to the audience as if Christians always agree. But this is what he wants to do, and that's why he won't debate any Christians in public, because he wants to make it seem like we all agree. But in actual fact, all Christians don't agree, even on the basic points which he's attempting to represent. Time. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you watch videos of Jake, Jake says, we Muslims believe, we Muslims believe. I've seen him do it myself. But the point is, not all Muslims agree with Jake. The Shia certainly don't. So the reality is, Jake also does the same thing. It seems that Jake has come here because he has been stung by the fact that Islam has a description of Allah that's contradictory. And I'll try to dig into that a little. I would ask Jake to give me an example of mercy that is not a transaction. Now, I don't deny that there are differences amongst Christians. That is what Jake says about me, not something I've ever said myself. Furthermore, I don't deny that God has the potentiality to do things. But what I don't do is attribute to God that he has done something and is independent of his creation. Okay, so what Bob has done, because he's avoided the entire thing, again, the fact of the matter is this. He is claiming to represent Christian theology, and he keeps talking about the essence-energy distinction, but the fact of the matter is, we've seen a clear demonstration that he doesn't even understand the basics of the essence-energy distinction. He can't answer as to whether or not you can actually have uh, the energies that are eternal. He said, well, yeah, we have energies that have a beginning, but he could, he said, I don't know as to whether or not there are energies which are eternal. We appeal to St. Athanasius, and we also appeal to St. Gregory of Palamas to show that Bob's entire argument against Muslim theology actually goes back against his own scholars like St. Gregory of Palamas, who is the one he's claiming to actually represent. Now, okay, Bob, hold time. on one second. Hold Sorry, on one second. I'm going to reply. Hold, one oh, minute. No, hold on one second. I have to go. So this is going to be our last point. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, the one who has run away from the debate here is Jake. Jake ran away from the debate about the oneness of Allah, about the body parts of Allah. Notice the interruption. Stop my time. Stop. It's a nice time. Are you done?
Are you done? Delay. We'll wait until you're done. We'll wait until you're done. He's got an appointment. Are you waiting until we're done? Are you done? Are you finished? Thank you very much. Right, ready? Go. So the fact of the matter is, Jake had the opportunity to answer my questions about why the speech of Allah has something created that's just like it. Why the speech of Allah intercedes before Allah. And I'll point it out again. The Hadiths don't say the actions. The Hadiths say the Quran. Jake ran away because he's come here to make one point only, which is that I don't know everything that Gregory Palama says. I'm happy to concede that. That's not a point, it's a frivolous point. The reality is, how can Allah be independent of his creation if he is, he has as attributes things that are transactional to, to creation? No, what I've come here to demonstrate, which is clear to the audience, I hope, is that Bob is inadequate to make the, have these conversations. He doesn't even understand, forget about knowing everything of Gregory Palmas, I certainly don't, but he doesn't even understand the basics of the conversation. He can't answer as to whether or not there are energies which are eternal, which is foundational to his entire belief set. So, he also doesn't want to highlight the fact that Christians on these basic points, actually some of them agree with the Muslims and not him, Gregory Palamas and also St. Athanasius. But one last point, the main problem with Bob is he doesn't understand his own Christian theology. He has a hodgepodge of all different views and because he doesn't understand them and uses basic uh, just catchphrases, the problem is he's putting things together that are incoherent. So the incoherence is with you, and many other Christians are waking up to the fact, such as Ben. Thank you. There we go. Okay. All right, thanks, Bob. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jake. Look after yourself. Take care, guys. Take care. Right. So we'll do a wrap up. What I want to point out to you guys is Jake came here with a single ambition, and that is that he just wanted to do an ad hominem attack upon me which is to say that I'm no expert of Gregory Palamas, that I'm no expert of Christian theology. Well, I've never claimed to be. So what? Do you think that most of the people in this park are experts on the topics that they talk about? Jake doesn't seem to understand the park very well. Nor is it, um, nor is it reasonable to say that I am ill-equipped to make a criticism of Islam when, when he had the chance to deal with that criticism, he didn't. Because central to, because he was trying to argue that Gregory Palamas agreed with Islamic theology. That's rubbish. Gregory Palamas believes in the Trinity, believes in the multiplicity of the energies of God. The question is, does Jake believe in a plurality within the oneness of God? A good question. And he refused to engage in any of the criticisms that I was actually making. Yeah. All he wanted to do was talk about the creator point. To talk about the creator point. And the, the reality is that this is not a defense. An ad hominem attack against me is not a defense of Islam. The fact that one non-expert is speaking to another non-expert about their non-expertise <laughs> is essentially what... Um, Jake reduced this conversation down to. He had the opportunity to engage in a real debate and he ran from it. The reality is that the description of Alan, and please note that I asked him this question, he avoided it. And that, just count how many times, I don't know if JC can put a counter up of how many times I ask a question that he doesn't answer. But I asked him the question about the transactional nature of Allah's attributes, i.e. his mercy. And he didn't answer the question. Nothing. Because he knows that it contradicts the idea that Allah is completely independent. Now, he also said of me things that I have not said. I have not denied the fact that God has the potentiality to be the creator. What I am saying is that God is not the creator until he creates. Now. When we look at Gregory Palamas, I believe that Gregory Palamas is saying the same. That God is not the creator until he creates, but he always has the potentiality to create. Jake is saying that 
Muslims have the same understanding. But the reality is they give to Allah 99 attributes and these attributes are eternal. One of them is that he is a creator. Not that he has the potential to be the creator, but that he is the creator. That he is merciful. Well, mercy is a transaction. So Jake, you had your opportunity. And notice how Jake appealed to Ben. This, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly the fruits of division and sectarianism. It helps the enemies of the Christian faith. That's what you saw, Jake doing that. Sectarianism helps that. And I hope, I hope and pray that, that Dr. Bubran, John, um, Bu, uh, is it Branson or Johnson? I'm not sure. That he doesn't fall into the trap, as many Christian apologists do, of simply trying to cozy up to their, their Muslim counterpart and chucking other Christians under the bus. The reality is Islamic theology and Christian theology are different. Islamic theology has deep-rooted contradictions in that Jake ran away from debating. Christian theology, like the energy essence distinction, makes far more sense. Now, he pointed out that Roman Catholics don't believe in the energy essence distinction. He's absolutely right. At no point did I ever deny this. But Muslims disagree. The Asharis, the Asharites and the Salafis, the Shia and the Sunni, they disagree with one another. So what, what, what point has he made by pointing that out? Nothing. I've never denied it. He seems to suggest that I've been trying to deny it, and I haven't. It's just that I take seriously my discipleship, and discipleship in the Lord means that we work for the unity of the church. Working for the unity of the church is a real activity, not a, just an intellectual principle. Right. Which means that yeah. I don't seek to divide the church or accentuate the differences between us. Yeah. And that's what Jake doesn't understand, is that I'm serious about my discipleship in the Lord. So Jake, you had your opportunity to have a debate, you fluffed it. All you did is reduce our conversation to well, you don't know Gregory Palamas as well as you think you do. Well, since I admitted that, and I've never claimed to be an expert at Gregory Palamas, what's your point? You're not an expert either. Furthermore, if my criticisms of Islam were invalid, why couldn't you tackle any of them? Why didn't you just show that I was wrong and demonstrate why I was wrong rather than just go on and on and on and on and on about how I don't, uh, uh, don't understand Gregory Palamas. And I would, I would dispute whether um, he is being fair in his understanding of Gregory Palamas, whether he's being accurate in his understanding of Gregory Palamas. At no point did I deny that energies are eternal. I didn't say that. I think the point's proven already. I, don't th I didn't say that. So, guys. Sadly, I thought we were going to have an interesting conversation and it just turned into a 45 minutes of attempted ad hominem, obfuscation and avoiding the criticisms that he, I was trying to make. What can I do? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob.